All right, YouTube, it's time for the occult video 103 getting up there in the playlist, of course, uh, on even fraudulent, fraudulent magic being important. And it is. Uh, you would think of probably the best example would be Blavatsky's work. And the reason I'm making this video, I got the idea. Uh, I was editing part of her secret doctrine, specifically the stanzas of Zion. Uh, these are purportedly, according to her at the time, they're based upon Tibetan writings. And she's only loosely correct. They're based on mundane Buddhist scriptures, uh, which she apparently misunderstood, took well out of context to form what essentially became the core of theosophy. But the fact that this was fraudulent, along with her seances and her secret letters, which she herself wrote, uh, used like trap doors and levers and stuff in her little apartment in order to make it seem like they were appearing magically. She was caught out as a fraud, literally, on dozens of occasions. People made a sport of uh, debunking what she was doing. But it didn't matter. It drove the core of the Victorian occult movement. Uh, during a period of social alienation and paradigm shift, roughly equivalent to what we're in now. The political paradigm shift we're going through right now is roughly akin to that which happened with the advent of the printing press and in the Victorian era with the advent of what you would consider early industrialized society at large. Uh, it's no different. The results will be similar, by the way, because they almost inevitably are. A rise of secularity followed by a relapse into spiritualism, uh, marked by the proliferation of new spiritual movements, some of which very quickly die off. Uh, when the paradigm shift is over, others which persist, grow, influence, join with, schism from mainstream religious forces that in turn inevitably become weaker uh, over time. There's never been a point, even at the most fervent of moments, that Christianity has been quite as strong as it was before the printing press or before the industrial era. It's beginning to lose steam. Islam is losing steam, and it's going to continue losing steam. Uh, this time around, it's not the printing press or early industry, uh, and we would say early global society, as in, you know, there are railroads everywhere, and, you know, we get the advent of the combustion engine and some of these other things that you get in that era. Um, this time it's digital. This time it's uh, much faster, and it will be much more pronounced. It keeps getting more pronounced each time, too. And the next paradigm shift, by the way, might follow right on the heels of this one. You might get to see three human epochs in your lifetime as the result of the advent of instant communication, if we don't nuke ourselves. But fraudulent magic is at the forefront, uh, in many cases, of these things. Uh, the misunderstanding, you could say, or at least Catholics would say, of sort of a, a Christian doctrine according to Luther, uh, really began to drive things forward uh, in the age of the early Renaissance. So too did the penning of a number of grimoires. Now, remember, almost none of the Renaissance-era occult writings are attributed to their actual author. Most of them either don't list an author or list somebody like Moses or Solomon. Moses and Solomon had nothing to do with these things. Um, the, the figures of antiquity that came into wider note because of the printing press were never involved with the construction of such things. But it influenced people as though it was. Uh, it brought about totally new mystery schools, occult traditions, spirituality, and so forth, uh, and drove human progress for several hundred years. You then get the, the sort of stagnation post-enlightenment, so to speak, for about a century. Uh, and then all of a sudden you're in the Victorian era, and the same thing happens uh, and in the Victorian era. You're getting telegraph and things early radio sort of towards the end and so forth and that's what's driving things uh, you know printing is obviously more common it's obviously easier than a printing press from the 1400s let's face it and now you've got a period of time where everything's instant you know i can write up a document i never have to leave where i am now and it'll be printed up by a, a business entity somewhere and i put it on amazon or something like that get a plan with Barnes and Nobles or something along those lines. Uh, fraudulent magic will be at the forefront of this paradigm shift too. Now, I don't engage in it. I prefer the more, I prefer the more historical side of magic. Um, I prefer things that are, are set in pagan lore from, in many cases, many centuries ago. Appalachian lore from the last century or two is fine. Um, it's like Holman's powwows, 1820s. Uh, it's it's partially based upon older pagan or paganized you could say traditions of occultism herbal healing and uh, remedies and so forth folk magic and incantations 
Uh, you would look at theosophy or something like that from the Victorian era, though, or you'd look at the work of Edgar Cayce from the early atomic era. That's sort of a mini paradigm shift between paradigm shifts, by the way, because of the atomic era's uh, own importance. You would look at that work and you'd say Edgar Cayce was not uh, adequate at predicting some future events. He thought Atlantis was going to surface around the time Bimini Road was discovered, and thus when it was discovered, people retroactively said, oh, it must be Atlantis. And now it turns out that the paving stones there are probably natural features. I'm not quite sure, but there's growing evidence that they're not artificial. So that's kind of debunked, but it doesn't matter that it was debunked. This tied in so well with the New Age, with UFO lore, with clairvoyance and astrology and all of these other spiritual practices that it found its niche audience at the time and has considered the Edgar Cayce society is still there and it probably will be for centuries more. It, it influenced occult traditions that came thereafter. Everything fuses together. I have no problem, by the way, with somebody like Blavatsky fusing East and West, even if they're misattributing things, because I look back at grimoires from five, six hundred years ago, I say the same thing ultimately was done. You know, if a 400-year-old text that claims to be from Solomon, it's obviously not from Solomon, it's obviously not from antiquity, it's not even from that region of the world, it's from, uh, it's from what's now the UK, from England, or from France, or Germany, or something like that. It doesn't matter. It opens up people's minds to new possibilities. We could say the rudiments of the current paradigm shift that I believe will get stronger over the next half century or so during our uh, lifespan and, and probably thereafter. Uh, what I see happening is people increasingly they're embracing the secular idea or the quasi-secular idea uh, of UFOs. Uh, reincarnation, theoretical physics, string theory, things of that nature. They're branching, like in the Victorian era, where some people, including folks like Blavatsky, seeked, sought to fuse science with the spiritual as a stand-in. They have become socially alienated from the traditional religious forces. Uh, a lot of these people sort of fell away from their faith in such things, and then they grabbed up theosophy or anthroposophy or something like that, what it is is a fusion in many cases of science as then understood with spiritual forces. I see no problem with that. The rise of the Volkish is a good thing. The rise of the re-rise of paganism, whether misattributed in some cases or not, is a good thing. The rise of secularity is a good thing for the world. These are good periods of time. The fact that they typically end in a lot of fighting and bloodshed and carnage Number one, may not happen this time. Maybe this time we'll overcome that. Number two, uh, that's the result of the traditionalist forces lashing back out at the rise of new ideologies in many cases. Uh, they do this specifically to keep their uh, hold on the world, so to speak. But yeah, even fraudulent magic is important. Uh, it's just like the uh, stanzas of Zian or Dizan, or I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation, to tell the truth and I'll have to brush up on it before I do the literary update that I'm going to do for that work, is the core of theosophy, what would become theosophy. It's the core of the core of the secret doctrine. And it's an interesting historical work because even though it's completely misattributed and even though it's author, which is what essentially she was, she didn't actually translate anything like that, the fact that she was a fraud, that her seances were bunk and so forth, doesn't matter at all. She still drove the spiritual argument for several decades, leading directly to people that came after and continued long after, people like Casey or Crowley or any of these other figures uh, that continued. You'd look back at Nostradamus. Nostradamus quatrains are so vague you could almost apply some of them to anything. But people still look back now, centuries later, to the plague times, and they still try to fit those prophecies in. You see documentaries and books and all these things written on his quatrains. Everybody has something to say about Nostradamus. I say he couldn't predict anything because he wasn't prophetic in any way, shape, or form, and people just see what they want to in regards to that material. Baba Yaga from, I think it was Bulgaria, some blind, uh, blind wise woman sort of uh, archetype there. Same thing, but it doesn't matter. People are still going to use that material. We're digging into the old now, once again. Much as in the era of the printing press, people almost immediately began fixating upon antiquity and ascribing new documents to antiquity. Much as in the Victorian era, some of that 
technology, the new ships they were building, the railroads and everything else they had, the new weapons, what did they immediately do? What did Napoleon do the second that he started getting these things? Before the Victorian era, of course, but the earlier age of exploration, you could say at large. He immediately goes after the Egyptians, finds the Rosetta Stone. He's immediately attacking all of these ant uh, societies that inhabit an area that happened to be important in antiquity going to see the pyramids, going to see the Sphinx, going to see this, that, and the other thing. It's obvious that man is deeply concerned with his roots and his past and with the history that came before us. What ends up happening and what will happen in this era, I predict, here's a prediction for you over the next 20 to 30 years or so. Increasingly, people will look to the past and they'll also create and craft utopian-style ideals of the future. There will be a proliferation of cults, there will be a proliferation of schismatic groups that loosely associate with mainstream religious forces. Secularity will continue to rise, but so, too, with that, will rise spiritual groups that are not particularly theistic, but are still spiritual. Pagan volkishness, uh, nationalistic movements will gain dominance in many countries. Communists will fall in back into favor to some degree. Anarchism will rise. Fringe political and social ideologies will be everywhere. States will stop existing, new states will be formed, borders will change, proxy wars will become more frequent, because we've literally seen this type of period of time before. That's what you can look forward to. The only difference and the one greatest risk in this paradigm shift, whether you're talking about from a, a completely secular humanistic perspective or something that has to do with the spiritual, is that in no prior paradigm shift of any great note have we had atomic and nuclear weapons. That's uh, probably the biggest sticking point. I think there's a reason why those uh, that are in charge in many countries are attempting to sort of fuse into one super state for the purposes of governance. I don't think it'll work. I think we'll end up having to find another solution because they're alienating people even worse than they were already socially alienated. And the occult will be on the forefront of driving both sides of the debate. Honestly, you see it. Look at what happened to the U.S. election. We've got a presidential candidate rambling about a cartoon frog. Why do you think that is? We are in the middle of a paradigm shift that finally I'm, I can say this. Originally I estimate it was just a, a political paradigm shift. It's gone beyond that. It's now also a social shift. It's a technological shift. It's everything else. We are in the next Victorian era. We're in the next age of exploration, the next enlightenment, the next industrial boom, the next advent of the printing press beginning of the Renaissance. You name it, we're in it at the moment. So that's what you can look forward to. See if I'm right. Come back to this video 20 years from now, and you can say yay or nay. You were prophetic in what you predicted would happen. But yeah, uh, fraudulent magic will prol proliferate. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's misattributed. It doesn't matter if it's authentic or if it's based on a proper translation of some scripture. It doesn't matter if it's historical. It never has been. That's the point. All those grimoires that people now take for granted as being legitimate occultism, none of them have anything to do with Solomon or Moses. Uh, <laughs> the, the Book of Moses was not written by Moses. Um, the Lesser Key of Solomon was is not from that era of time. That's just the way that it works, like politics. People will dig up and revive old political ideologies. Communism uh, dates to the 1800s. There are still communists. There will probably be more of them in another decade. There will be a hell of a lot more skinheads. There will be racial nationalists, cultural nationalists, libertarians. We see all sorts of new forces rising. The upheaval that we see here and in the UK and all over the EU and in India and China. We see it increasingly in Africa. We see it in Latin America. It's everywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's going to get more and more fervent over the next few decades. Unless there is a nuclear war, it will continue getting more fervent. And if there is a nuclear war, that's the ultimate paradigm shift. We go right on back to the beginning and we start over again. Burn it all to the ground and then rebuild. That's about all. Peace out.